another episode of Real Fake Guns. Today, for the first time, we're actually not going to use any real parts, but we're going to take a look of how I weather my Airsoft AKs, since it's the one of the most common questions I get. This is my real sword type 56. It's steel and wood and this has no real parts. It has only been weathered with some sandpaper, coca-cola and for the wood parts some sanding, oil and paint. This is kind of heavy wear but the guide will also show you how to do some lighter wear as well. So there's something for everybody. And this guide works for the blue steel AK such as uh, LCT, ENL, some even GMG models, GHK for example, but SEMA, I'm sorry, <laughs> they are painted black. I'm not sure how it will look with the Coca-Cola effect. You can try it, but there's still some steps in this guide that will work for you. Before you start to weather your AK, take a look of real reference picks online of the exact same model you're going to recreate. Because all the models wear different, they have different paint, have different gluing and so on. So it's very important to find out which one you have. Is it maybe a Romanian AK we want to do? Or is it a painted black Russian AK? Because they have much thicker paint and it will look completely different how you weather them. Or is it a Chinese Type 56 AK as the one I'm doing today? When I was in Vietnam a while back, I was very lucky to shoot a real one of these. Okay, enough bragging for the internet. Let's get started. So here's the standard real sword type 56 AK. It has not been modified, it's just a stock out of the box. So this is how it looks before I'm going to make it look old and worn. The only thing I've done to it is to punch out the bayonet. This was pretty common to see in the battlefield as well. And this is because it comes with a plastic bed. So I'm going to have it removed until I can find a real one. So before we disassemble it, we need to weather it since this is pretty much out of the box. And something I use when I weather metal, I use very, very fine grit sandpaper. This is 1200. I would advise to have even higher, but this is the one I have now and since I'm going to rust it up it doesn't matter that much. And when you weather your AK, this is something I see many beginners do it wrong. They weather it like on full auto, yeah, or semi-auto. The gun actually gets most wear when it's unsafe, when you carry it, when you walk around with it, when you put it against things and fall over and, and, and whatnot. So keep it unsafe and when you weather it look at real pictures of that exact same gun because it varies from AK to AK. This one is uh, blued. Some are painted black. Russians, for example, are always painted black, except for the early AK-47 one, but all the ones from that are painted black. So yeah, uh, take a look on the model you're going to weather. I have done this uh, thousands of times now, so I have it in my head, but look at the real pictures so you don't do too much. A common thing is people that weather like in the holes everywhere, they just go too much. Start a little each time, maybe wait a day. Take on on surface like this, on the outside, don't go on the inside fully, only like so, and just work your way there. And as I said, just look at the real picture to get it done correctly. So you just brush the edges so you get them to pop out some more, get a more contrast on the gun. As you can see here we focus on this part, not the full surface. Often this side gets more worn since this is decide to carry against your body, against the magazines and whatnot, and it wears and wears. Since these AKs are very old, it gets a lot of wear here over the years. Often also uh, near the barrel gets more worn because here's often where you grab it when it stands on the ground. So this part here is often more worn uh, than this area. A trick I use is actually a hammer. Many people only use uh, the sandpaper, but if you look at the real ones, it has a lot of things. So you have to whack them. So we get these small uh, dents, for example. 
And this is full steel, so it won't <laughs> break the airsoft. Use your keys. Also get a nice random wheel to it. And just use random things you can find. As you can see, it feels <laughs> very worn and random. And I think this uh, should do it. You can always do more or you can always do less depending on your taste, but this looks as it has been used for a few years. And here is where I usually stop on my other AKs. This is far enough. You can do more or less with this technique, but if you want even more heavy use, just continue on with this video guide and see how it looks. So now it's time to disassemble it. Here we have the steel parts that we're going to cook with the Coca-Cola effect. And here we have the wood parts, I'm gonna sand them down and refinish them. And here we have the internals. Don't put these in Coca-Cola, <laughs> leave them be. And here's the small bits for them. So now let's put these in the box. And here they are, and here's the Coca-Cola. This is regular Coca-Cola, even though they look like the light versions, but this is just a local color they have right now. And I'm not the first to do this. I actually got this uh, idea from blah 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 blah, I think his name is, on uh, Arnis, who did this on his real sword, which turned out real nice. So all credit goes to him with uh, Coca-Cola, so it's gonna be very fun to try it. And I also added some salt to this mix, because salt eats uh, metal and adds rust to make the effect go a little bit faster. Let's see how it goes. So while we wait for the Coca-Cola to set in, I'm going to remove the finish from the wood parts. I'll start with some lower grit and then continue with the 400 grit. So here it is after I remove the finish. As you can see it's not perfect, but that's how I want it. So it looks like it has been worn in the battlefield and then have been refinished. So you have some left of the original finish. And what I'm going to use is this. It's named teak olja in Swedish. Probably the same on English or just some kind of furniture oil or wood. I'm gonna apply it with some paper, but be careful with the paper after you're done. Uh, put it in water because it may uh, start a fire. As you can see it start to regain some color. And here it is, I'm gonna let it dry and soak it up into the wood and then it's time for the next step. And now the wood parts has uh, dried, I'm going to add some uh, black paint to them. It's something you often can see in the battlefield, the re-furnished wood or just bare worn wood. It has some dark spots on the wood. And I use an acrylic paint marker, the Molotov one for all. I use them pretty often in some of my videos. Just apply some here and rub it out. As you can see it gets a darker pattern. And add some here. I think this is a pretty nice uh, shade. Looks about how they do on the battlefields. And now I'll just do the same on the other parts as well. Remember, don't overdo it. Do a little each time. And here they are after I used the black paint, as you can see. Gets more uh, contrast and uh, vivid colors to the wood. As you can see, I focus a lot on the edges where the dirt often uh, gets stuck. But there is still something I want to add. It's some uh, acrylic paint. This is called raw umber. I also use Mars black sometimes. It's very, very dark uh, brown. And I just water it out. This is something I also use on my post-apocalyptic uh, loadouts. And just apply it like so. And then wipe it off. And it gets a more dirty, worn look. You got some black and you got some dark brown in there. And mixed with the oil, it looks 
alive. And I'll just continue doing this on the other parts as well. And here it is applied on all the wood parts. It's still uh, wet. I'll leave some uh, of the paint still there. Some I've just wiped off to get a natural worn look uh, when it dries. And as you can see, it's a muddy water kind of look on the paint, which looks a lot like the real mud. Okay, so here's the wood parts. What I want to do now when I'm happy with uh, how they look, I'm gonna use some uh, clear coat uh, matte so it's not glossy. And this is to keep all the paint on the parts because it will fall off over time and I want to keep how they look right now. And this is the Belton Molotov clear coat. They have uh, gloss, semi-gloss and matte. So this is the matte one. And I'll just apply it like this. A generous amount. So it really sticks in there. Then let it dry and then turn them around and do the other side. So here's how the wood turned out with the clear coat. I think that is pretty nice. Okay, so now it has been, I think, less than an hour, maybe 30 to 60 minutes. And as we can see here, <laughs> almost all the paint uh, are gone. So I'm going to take it out to let it dry. As you can see, the Coca-Cola <laughs> has really eaten up a lot of it. And the barrel. As you can see here, I have done a little test assembly. It looks pretty decent, uh, but the receiver itself lost too much uh, of its original color. But I really like the top cover and rear side face and such. It's got a decent amount touched by the cola effect. But what I'm going to do with uh, the receiver, as you can see here, it's slightly darker. That's because I have uh, applied some uh, bluing liquid to uh, blue the steel. So I'm going to continue applying it till I get a nice uh, even finish I like. And I'm using the Swedish Stockholms Vapenfabrik Bloneringsvetska. It's just Swedish bluing liquid. Some use birch wood casey for example. There are many different kinds. Just go to your local gun shop or website and they should have it. see right away it's starting to get dark to spread it out. It doesn't have to be that even uh, when you're doing a worn look. So here we have it assembled again uh, with the wood and all the parts. It uh, looks pretty good uh, and we are almost uh, done with it. But before we are done, we need to re-weather some of the parts. As you remember in the start, we focus on the corners. I have to add some. Don't do it as much this time, only like rub the surface so you get a good contrast with the old uh, and the new. You get some nice highlights that make it look more alive and pop out and you need to get this line here you just do like this it's a very typical look from a worn AK and just go along with the edges don't do too much just touch it up a little and it will look great something don't forget to like and subscribe and if you enjoy my content please become a patron 
helped me support me leveling up my video gear so it sounds better, looks better and so on. I have a link in the description, you can click it and you can become a Patreon. See you next time!